what's up everyone daddy robux here and today we are continuing our playthrough of the out of the abyss um so far our party uh, who had previously been captives of the velcon valve drow outpost have made their escape after velcon valve was attacked by a series of demons and uh, the ensuing confusion allowed them the chance to get away so now our party is uh, fleeing Falcon Valve and quite literally fumbling through the Underdark as we frantically try to escape. Uh, as you guys travel, um, you, you do uh, pick up on, on signs that you are being pursued, that some of the drow have sent uh, scouts in order to try a, and recover their lost prisoners so trying to run is being is proved to be a difficult task and uh so just so that we know uh what we're in for today um a, a large part of our session is going to be you guys navigating through the underdark which is for many of you a vast and alien structure something that we we really don't have a lot of experience with and as we navigate through the Underdark, depending on the encounters we have, uh, the directions that you choose to follow um, will determine whether or not we are recaptured or if we manage to elude them entirely and escape. So the first thing that we need to, we need to take care of, uh, is I think you guys have already updated your sheets, but uh, after getting to a safe distance, you do know that you're still being pursued, but the party is able to take a rest. So everybody should have rested, removed the level of exhaustion, and uh, be prepared in that sense. So then our our party is sitting at a makes a, ma a makeshift camp, right? And you're sitting around together, and you have to decide what are you gonna do next. What is the what is the priority for your party? I think food. Mom, what's the priority? Mom, what's for dinner? Food and a place for her to become less exhausted. Okay, so so for food. Um and where would you guys try to gain food? There's mushrooms. There are mushrooms. You are very much correct. So so you are able uh, to forage for food as you guys are traveling, and I do believe I have a handout for that. Where to go? Oh. Boop, 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 boop. Um, so there's there there's mushrooms and fungi all over, right? Um, but it's you know. Most of our party are goblins from the surface. They don't have any kind of indication as to what mushrooms are edible and what are not. You, however, being a drow, uh, you have to remind me, your background, you did grow up, you are an Underdark native, right? Yes. Okay, so, so you would know how uh, more accurately it's edible and what. So there are two checks that would be necessary here. Um, one would just, I'm trying to find it. There's, there's like 10 handouts for this chapter. So we do apologies for that. Um, there's a check for foraging for food and it's a default check. I'm pretty sure it's just a survival check. Um, but that, that's just the default, you know, foraging during travel. Uh, here we go. There's some threats, navigating, mapping, foraging. There we go. Uh, unless you obtain a supply of food or water, you must forge to survive. Uh, so as we're taking a rest, we would be foraging. Who's foraging? Who, who, who's searching around the camps for food? It's not a trick question. <laughs> it just need volunteers. <laughs> It's going to be a really difficult session if nobody's talking.
All right, wait. Is is something going on here? Like, uh, I don't know. I didn't hear anything. Yeah, he rolled with twelve. Yeah, I asked like three questions and nobody answered. Yeah, yeah, no. that we didn't hear anything. <laughs> Why I left because I was really confused because there was silence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing Discord shit the bed. Let me repeat. Um, in order to forge for food, we need somebody to make a survival check. Uh, DC is 15. So, and then I asked, who all is going to forge for food? Mother rolled. Uh, anyone else wants to help mother? Oh, I have a pretty okay survival, I guess. Well, I can help. Love how it's like I need mom needs help, and then all of us just like me, 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 help. Okay, we yeah. all. Uh, the thing is blowing my. I hear here's. This is the first time I've ever actually encountered this rule set. Um, here's here's the the important part, right? Foraging for food yields a amount of, of food relevant to your creature size. So a small creature, if they successfully forage for food, they can gather four pounds of food. A medium creature can gather 16 pounds. Which, that seems like a lot. <laughs> so I guess... Um, you have mushrooms? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Uh, so far, only Mother has been successfully able to, to forge for food. Everybody else is like, is this a mushroom? And holds up a rock. And <laughs> <laughs> Can we eat this? And you're like holding a stick. Like <laughs> Mother actually successful. I've had mushroom with us. Mushroom. Oh, that's right. She has disadvantage. <laughs> Didn't someone help her? Well, no. Actually, uh, that I did say earlier, being an Underdark native, she has advantage on checks to forge. For, ah. Or no, 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 no. Also, uh, Not for foraging. Trout. For, uh, for, uh... Yeah, she is there. It, it's, that's not what you would have advantage on. You would have advantage on the next check. Hold up. Uh, my proficiency bonus is double. Darn, I only got a 14 on that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, don't rangers get their goofy, uh... The thing that's have... never useful. I have expertise for proficient skills when you make an intro whiz check related to it. Uh, sadly, <laughs> that d isn't enough to give me a 15. It only gives me a 14. Well, sucks to suck. So, so far, we're starving? <laughs> um, Voitek did find Voitek found some food. <laughs> and he's... And he's... he's, he's... Medium size, so to be fair, I like... have disadvantage. So, oh, oh, yeah, 15 would be the low. Oh, yeah, and he is medium sized. So then, uh, he takes his 16 pounds of food and divides it up seven, among seven ways. <laughs> who can who can do math? It, it's not not important, right? It, it's uh, yeah, 2.2. <laughs> 2.2 2 pounds. It's, it's not enough, not enough to only really mush, fill mushrooms? your belly, but it's enough that uh, nobody will starve. All right. Mom, what kind of meat did this come from? Now, what kind of animal? Thing here My Conan. When you are foraging in the Underdark, uh, the majority, like, there's no like plants, there's no lush vegetation. Like the the ecosystem of the Underdark, it's all fungus and lichen and you know, and and being able to identify which of those mushrooms are safe and edible, and which of them are poisonous and can kill you, is very important. So after foraging for food, you have to inspect your mushrooms, <laughs> and make an intelligence nature check to correctly identify what they are. Uh oh. This is the check Sovereign would have advantage on for being an Underdark native. Uh, I, that's actually a 17. Because I have uh, expertise on checks like these. Okay. 
Um, so, so Wojtek comes back and he dumps his cache of mushrooms. He's like, look, I picked all of these. And when you, when you look at them, um, you see that there are several different kinds of, of fungus here. Uh, he's collected some ripple bark, which are large shelf-like mushrooms that they kind of look like, uh, like, like flesh when it's left out in the sun and begins to rot, it's like wrinkled and putrid. It smells very Eek. rotten. And, uh, even though it is quite disgusting, it can be eaten raw. And, uh, <laughs> and, and can be quite nutritious. Uh, in addition, being from, from the Underdark, you know that most, most of the drow tend to roast the ripple bark as it kind of cuts back on its putrescent smell and taste. Uh, he's also found uh, what you can identify is a pale orangey uh, group of moss. And this moss is called a fire lichen. Uh, it usually grows around where there are thermal vents coming up from the ground. And uh, the, the fire lichen itself is not edible, but it can be ground into a paste, which you uh, typically smear on bread or other, other spore caps. No, fun. We're learning about drow cuisine. <laughs> it's nice. So we have the, 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 the meat and the, the, the sauce to put on the meat. And then we, we cook the meat, put the sauce in, and eat. I That's do not it. have my favorite cookbook, The Joys of Under Dark Cooking. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. I just eat the food. What animal does this come from? Is this meat? Uh, it's my conid meat. <laughs> I got, I got one more for you. Okay. Uh, also, among the uh, the mushrooms that he has collected, you're able to to note one that uh, is definitely not edible. You see, uh. He has broken off a portion of a timask, what is also known as the devil's mushroom. It's a a toadstool with orange and red stripes across its cap. And uh, you can see that this is very poisonous. Can its poison be extracted? Uh, not in a way that would be useful. You know that Timasks, usually when destroyed or uprooted, uh, expel poisonous spores in a large cloud. Uh, the fact that he has a portion of the cap <laughs> here, uh, lets you know that this one must have already been, de been dead before he picked it up. Okay, good. I was worried for a bit there. <laughs> If you see these mushrooms again, don't pull them from the ground. Like this one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's colorful. Uh, so is death. Oh. oh. Looks like one of those mint candies, right? Red stripes. <laughs> if you're going to pull it, pull it when mother is far away. <laughs> I won't. How, how dare you insinuate such things about Mother? Mother would never deny her precious children. <laughs> uh, uh, we all will, will share equally the non-poisonous mushrooms and lichen. <laughs> like that oil just disparaging you in the comments all right uh so with with our bellies somewhat full um what would be the next 
course of action. What do you do then? Perhaps near a thermal vent would be a good place to rest. Well, you have just rested. That was, uh, that's what, literally what you're doing right now. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, then the next suggestion would probably be to get further away from the prison. And and so what would that like be? Just pick a direction and, and go? Or is there a particular goal in mind? What, what do the goblins wish? Do they wish to uh, head deeper into the Underdark or out of Underdark? I wish to, to go. They'll be expecting us to go up. We should go down. But that doesn't help us. Does it? Be away. Yeah, but then we have to try to leave a different way. If we go far enough down, we'll be up. I can't argue with that logic. Let's go Sound down. Sound wisdom. Down it that, is. That's, that's, that's we weird. shall seek further into the Underdark. Interesting. So, you just begin to travel. Uh, seeking to move away from uh, anywhere that would take you to the surface. Um... Does anybody recall some of the nearby locations that the other prisoners had informed you of? Wait a minute, there was that one place, what was it, Gotlagrim? We could go there. There's dwarves there. Dwarves are slightly less murdery than the people we're running from. Slightly. I need to start, I guess. Uh Keep in mind, the last dwarf we encountered, we didn't ex we didn't exactly make friends with him. So Gottmulgrim is an option. Do we know which direction is Gottmulgrim? <laughs> so so here here's where we are right um during your what was it four weeks in in uh Vilkenvelv, um you had talked with a lot of the other hear me now yeah i like <laughs> I, I i just looked in discord and i saw voice connected like it, it cycled from red to yellow back to green. Something is it's going wrong. Yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye on it. I mean, if it keeps if it keeps dropping, I mean, obviously we can't. Hey, we'll 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 just keep an eye on it. Um. So during your four weeks uh, as prisoners in Belkenbel, you spoke a lot with with the other prisoners, and over the last two sessions. I have told you of at least six other locations and their general directions. <laughs> I know that you, the player, probably remember none of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you, the character, might. Um, so if you are interested... Let's, uh, shit, what would that be? Insight? History? I don't know. Make a roll of some sort to try and... Intelligence and, check. And recall <laughs> some of that info. Yeah, it would be intelligence. Uh, recall that information. Ha. Huh. Uh oh. Those are all pretty awful rolls. <laughs> Sovereign, uh, mother, you are a disadvantage. There we go, nine. Uh, Zisrod and Wojtek, thank you. Um, for those roles, you're not going to remember everything. But you remember that the, uh, 
the deep gnomes we're talking about blingden stone the blingden stone is to the north you also know that blingden stone has a route to the surface from talking with the myconid uh you know that neverlight grove is also nearby although you do not know the direction but you know that Neverlight Grove was promised to be a place of sanctuary. Hey guys, we should go to Blinky Stone. Hold on, there's more. You also know that okay. Gracklestir is somewhere to the south. And the dwarf, uh, I'm sorry, no. The, uh, it was the Mad Prince had suggested Gracklestir as a place to gather supplies and better equipment. And then lastly, um, you know, Sovereign knows of the Dark Lake, a massive underground uh, body of water. And the, bo and the Dark Lake uh, is a way to travel quickly, but you would need to secure a boat. Luckily, the Kuatoa told you the location of Sloobdulpup, where you could possibly acquire such a boat. I want to go on a boat. So, now with that new information, new, new old information, <laughs> uh, does, the, does that help inform or hinder our choice? Which, where would we like to try try and go? Fishhead was the most trustworthy out of all those people. I say we go there to the lake to uh, to Slubu. Dop. Yeah. He was weird though. They were all weird. They've been in prison very long. The half. Yeah, but the was at least. You know, sensible. My vote is for Plinky Stone. Mother just wants to go somewhere where Mother can be less exhausted. <laughs> so uh, currently, that vote is for either uh, Blingden Stone or Neverlight Cove. Neverlight Grove. They are relatively close, if I remember recall correctly. I go where Mother goes. Where is Mother going? Mother is going either Blingden Stone or Neverlight Grove. <laughs> it can't, um, can't be either or. <laughs> you guys got to make a choice. I would also if anyone else has a preference, I will heed. But uh, yeah, I am. I am just trying to find a place where I can finally start being able to do things as a ranger again. <laughs> Blingden Stone was with the. Dwarves, right? No, that was the gnomes. Hey, Bonafides. Gnomes. Thank you for the resub. Appreciate you. Welcome Never back. like Grove it is, because uh, I don't want no... I don't want no more gnomes. Gnomes suck. Okay. <laughs> so so we're going to try and head to Never Like Grove. Yes. So and here's the thing. Find out it's lied. Here's the next question. As we travel to Never Like Grove, Remember, we are being pursued by people who wish to put us back into captivity. Are we? Tr what pace are we traveling at? You can travel at a normal pace, right? Which then you're covering ground at a decent amount, um, but you're not really putting any distance between you and your pursuers. You have the option to travel at a fast pace, but doing so puts you at a disadvantage to notice threats in the, in the darkness of the Underdark. You also are not able to forge for food while traveling at a fast pace, but it'll put more distance between you and your pursuers. Wow. I'll be uh, expecting this. Holy... <laughs> <laughs> hey! 
again wow this is this might be the the book for a ranger like <laughs> that's that's very cool all right uh you are so well, we can here, move here's something? the thing here's the thing though okay uh, we can't move fast and s stealthily at least i can't do it with a group i can well, move you can't move fast and forge any it, either it just says you're not slowed by difficult terrain but moving slowly mo allows you to move stealthily so you can use slowly you can move normally and try to use stealth But you can't can't move fast and benefit from it. I I well, say you guys just force march, super fast, no rest. Hmm, super fast, no rest. No, because then mother will die to exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mother suggests uh, either a medium to slow pace for the first day. If Mother can secure food on that day, we can then force march at high speeds. Um, then we go normal pace, mm -hmm. right? I agree. Keep them uh, at a, a, a slight distance from us, and then when, when we find some more food, we go for fa fast pace. So, so we're going to move at a normal pace. Okay. Yes, yes. So now here's... The last bit, okay? Uh, <laughs> you guys are going to love this. Group self oh, no. oh, no. These distances between these locations are quite far. Any travel within the Underdark is long and arduous. Uh, a lot of this book is going to be you guys trying to survive the Underdark, not just navigate it. Uh, it's a hostile and alien place. And from Velkenvelve to Neverlight Grove, it is 36 days of traveling. So that is 36 Jeez. days of opportunities to be caught, captured, killed. And encounter things all right so a choice has been made and now what's going to happen uh well you don't know it's that long you just head in the direction of the location of your choice right and eventually you'll get there or you'll die so here's what's going to happen right there are two methods of rolling for random encounters um <laughs> one of one of uh these methods uh leaves things up to random right the other is a guaranteed encounter i will be alternating between the two we'll do some some random rolls to see if anything uh trips you up if nothing does you'll be able to rest forge continue on as normal but then after so many rolls with no encounters and I'm going to use a guaranteed encounter and we'll alternate back and forth. Okay. However, uh, one of the other mechanics involved here is the space as we traverse through the underdark passages and caverns and the marching order. So, uh, in many places, we'll, we can only traverse single file because uh you know the underdark is a vast cave system and as sometimes those passages become very narrow uh we wouldn't be able to walk side by side so on our main page here which i believe is where everybody is um with the leftmost token being the first and the rightmost token being the last i want you guys to set up your single file marching order. So the right is the, the last, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So Dirk is in the front. 
Nux is in the back. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, Zsrad, you're up awful close. <laughs> the only way back. Uh, having some kind of shield behind me is also great. Nux, stay behind me. <laughs> I don't this have a shield I like in the middle. I like this. You know, we got we got you know melee in the fr melee on both sides. This is why mother hides in the middle, because otherwise I'm gonna get ambushed from behind. Okay, satisfied with that order? Yes, yeah, I am. Okay, so then uh, here's what we're gonna do. Here's our first day of encounters. Our first. Day of encounters, and uh, just so that you guys, you know, full transparency, because we're gonna be pretty much the plan for this session, and then maybe the next session as well, because travel is gonna be a large, a large part of this book. Um, is, is to just navigate through encounters. So, the way random encounters work through, for out of the abyss is for each day we roll two. D um, uh, anything above a 13 is an encounter although that does not specifically mean combat that just means something of interest either with the terrain uh, some kind of creature or both right uh, and it all depends so each day is 2d20 so here's day 1 18 <laughs> 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 all right all right so 18 is an encounter right so with the encounter the before i even check and see what they do what they are uh you guys need to roll am i a stupid i just had it open what did you do travel base and marching order. there it is uh Establish marching order. Roll a d6. On a roll of one or two, before the encounter happens, you are traveling through a narrow passageway and you are single file. On a roll of three or four, it's a standard passageway, you are two by two. Uh, five or six, the encounter is in a large open area. And if we do hit a narrow passageway, where we were forced to single file, that slows down our progress and our pursuers get closer. All right, so lots of lots of moving parts here. Uh, actually, let us there we go. Uh, you should see a second set of tokens on the main page. If we can set that second grouping. To the marching order when we're two by two. So if it's uh it's like narrow passageway at the top, standard does it I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good, thank you. And I do apologize because um you know I, I've read this several times and I prepared myself as best I could for for there's so many different random encounters, um, but I wanted I wanted to leave it up to the random nature of things because that's that's how the book is really designed. So for a lot of these, it's gonna be roll, check, set it up. So I do uh, apologize for the pauses in between. All right, so there's our our marching order. So let's roll a d6, and we are two by two. So this. Uh, we are two by two right now. We didn't get slowed down by a narrow passage. And what is our encounters? Well, we have a terrain encounter. Which is a nine. Then, because it's an 18. Also get... Gotta scroll all the way down. Dice roll the book. Yeah, for real. 
Um, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, now that I think about it, I'm, I'm gonna make my Is there back rows for this already. Yeah, I'm gonna screw it. We'll look that up later. All right, so as we are traveling. Um, you're, you're moving through a long and winding corridor. And as you move, uh, the ground suddenly begins to rumble and shake. Ah, the ground begins to rumble and shake. Oh no, panic! Oh no, panic! Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Calm down. <laughs> the uh, ground's panic. moving! What's happening? Tremor opens up, and a lava-filled fissure, uh... It fills the area behind you. Each character, ah! each character needs to make a dexterity saving throw to avoid the lava swell. Taking, holy oh, shit, no. that's a lot of damage on a fail. Oh no. <laughs> if any of us fall in, I'm pretty sure we're dead. Would I have advantage for danger sense? Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's DC 10. You should be fine. Next you say that. I hey, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, I think two of my children are now dead. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> All right, uh, Zisrod failed. Three. Nux failed. That's it. I passed. All right, if you failed, let me zoom in real quick so I can see. It was Zisrod and Nux. If you failed, you take twenty-one. Fire damage from the lava. Oof. Ouch. <laughs> like, my children live! Not, well, not Ouch, well. not quite. <laughs> <laughs> he's not dead. He's not dead, but he's in the lava! Somebody save him! <laughs> ah! Mother is very slow and also too weak to physically lift Zizrod. I'm gonna right, push. Uh, what do I roll? Dirk will get him. I'll, I'll Durg or Voitech should well, grab him. Do, yeah. Yeah, no, Vo yeah. Bugbear can uh, just reach it down with his uh, goofy long arms and scoop him up. Goofy <laughs> oh, long yeah. arms and powerful build. Uh, so then, I also have good news and bad news. Oh no. Worse than the lava? Well, it depends on your point of view. Oh no. Oh no. Wow. Oh no. Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> have we been caught oh my god well no that was the good news because this lava fissure just sprang slows up them down. behind you that is going to, to prevent the, the drow from get, uh, catching you as quickly so good thing good thing uh, bad thing as the lava uh, fissure happens I'm going to pull you hello cat yes hi I'm going to pull you to another map. And this is uh, my default random battle map for this campaign, because I really like it. So, here we are. Uh, as you fish Zisrod out of the lava, the ground rumbles once more. And as the ground rumbles, you can see what is causing all of these seismic disruptions. As a large creature burst through the stone nearby. Uh, it is very large. I mean, it is a hulking monster inside this narrow hallway. It has a beetle-like carapace but it is a, a almost amber brown color. And as it bursts through the stone, it turns its attention towards you and gets ready to attack. Uh-oh. Can we flee? I want to flee from here. I don't think we can outrun it. <laughs> you definitely can't. It is quite fast. I know what it is, but I don't know if I know what it is. You're an Underdark native. You would certainly recognize an Umber Hulk. 
Disadvantage on initiative. <laughs> Again, don't be exhausted, stupid. <laughs> no. That's a beautiful bit of my back. All right, well, let's get it started. Voitech, you are up first. Surprise. Uh... I don't think I have sneak attack, right? Uh, no, nobody. No, all right. Nobody else is near. Well, what's your so, roguish shark type? Oh, uh, I think it was. What was it? Scout or something? I, don't tell me. Don't ask that. me. I don't know. It's your character. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. So I, I just go in. Poke give, it, give him a poke for and seven. And then uh, step aside, yeah. I try not to go into melee range with it. Not yet, anyway. Well, you got goofy long arms, so you could have just stood right there. Let me actually seat you guys into the squares. There we go. Alright, stab. He takes seven damage. And then, uh, Durg. Okay. I'm gonna rage. So you're just gonna have to bear with me for one minute. <laughs> uh... I'm path of the wild soul, so I gotta roll my the whole thing. Link the whole thing so that they because the party did not know this. But he is a wild soul barbarian. That is (laughs) Jesus. uh, I'm gonna roll my dice now. Yeah, if you scroll to the top, you can hit the D8. Eight. A beam of brilliant light lances from your chest in a five foot wide, sixty foot line. Each creature in the line succeeds a con save or takes 2d8 radiant. So can you roll the 2d8 radiant? He just became a cab. Yeah, the, the, the line's just going to go this way. <laughs> Through the party? <laughs> <That'd> be... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> just straight to the monster. It, it's 2d8, just that's okay. Yeah, yeah, if you look at the... Uh, yep. I rolled it. Six. It was a six. Uh, they pass the save. So they take nothing. And I'm just going to run up and attack him. You got it. Recklessly. Nice. That is a hit. And that's it. That's it. Yeah, you're only level three. Uh, These rod... Yes. Wait, why did it not work? Oh, it's D10. No, one D10. Uh, Heals for two. As uh, the burst of wild magic replenishes your chest so much. Flash. Oh, now that someone else healed him, I can use a spell to attack. Let's cast a Scorching Ray. Okay, 12 is a miss. Uh, make your other two attacks. 17 is a miss. Oh god, it takes spells not away. Every time I click it. 8 is a miss. You can... Uh... No, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can make a second attack. Yep, yep. Alright. Uh, that's all. Oiled. All right, gonna move back one, two, three, four, five over here, and I'm gonna. Okay. Fourteen is a miss. Oh, that's it. Nux. Okay, I'm going to use my second wind. Mm-hmm. Seems good. After getting boiled in lava. Then I'll get closer to the Umber Rook and attack. Hey, a hit! Oh, nice. I'll use my uh, Fury of the Small to add 3 damage. Yes. Uh, then I'll use my action surge to attack again. Got it. Uh, 
Nice. Ooh. All right, so another 11 damage, and will that be all? Uh, yes. The Umber Hulk. So the Umber Hulk turns in your direction, right? Whereas before, it just kind of burst through the, the ground, and it was running towards you. Um, now, it rears up standing in front of you with its full height, and uh, as you look into its face, you can see its uh, it, its gaze is quite unsettling. Something most unusual. Don't look at it. <laughs> no. The Umberhawk is going to use its massive claws and attack Nux and Durg, who are standing in front of it. So, Oof. Nux. So if you think that that's not the part, this is the part. Oof. <laughs> uh, Durg? Not too much. Wait, you reckless. Oh, crap. Aha! <laughs> yeah, that hits. Okay, so you will take six, six? slashing, because you are raging. Uh, and then it's going to try to bite you, Durg. 21 is a hit for another 6. So 12 Ooh. in total. Alright. This rod. Okay. Uh, uh, move up. This rod. Uh. You have started your turn within 30 feet of the yeah, Umber right. Hulk. I need a charisma save. I'm good uh, at those. They can avert if they do, but then they can't see it. That's right. I'm gonna try and look at it. Okay. So, Christmas Great. save? Oh. I should have decided that before I looked at my exhaustion level. <laughs> That's a fail. So, uh, as you are confused, you cannot take reactions until the start of your next turn, and I need you to roll a d8 right now, please. Eight. You make a melee attack against a random creature within your reach. Please no. <laughs> <laughs> it is random. It is random. So it's mom or no. melee tech. <laughs> no worries, because I don't have a weapon equipped and my unarmed strike is exceptionally very powerful. Very silly, yeah. <laughs> and if you do negative Come damage, on. it might actually heal people. Uh. <laughs> I don't think that hits either of you. So, all good. Unfortunately... How dare you, Z-Strad? Strike your is, own mother. Uh, Z-Strad's action. What would, you can still move if you'd like. Uh, five foot two here, yeah, that's it. Alright. I'm confused. Sovereign. Uh, Sovereign is going to not look at it. That seems pr probably for the best. Uh, let me see here. Here we go. Crossbow hand. And shoot at it. What was a miss? Is that all? Yep, that's it. Uh, actually, I'll move a little bit away. Wojtek? I have to make that stare thing, right? You can choose to avert your, your eyes, but if you're not looking at it, then you'll have disadvantage on your attacks. Because, you know, you have disadvantage on things you can't right. see. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll try that. Okay. I don't want to risk hitting anyone. Okay. Uh, uh, also, I'll just do a disadvantage. Uh, full transparency. That would also lock you out of your sneak attack. Oh, okay, sure. No problem. Is, okay. So, averting our eyes so we don't get confused. Attacking the Umber Hulk with disadvantage, 11 misses. Erg? Yes, I will avert my eyes and attack recklessly. So, normal swing. Normal swing. 18 is a hit? Yes, and I will use my Fury of the Small to add a extra 3 damage. Got it. Anything else? Nope. Flash. 
Um, let's put the all the dead on it. So we are going to look at it. Oh yes. All right, that charisma save, please. Twelve is a fail. Roll a d8. Uh, just a reminder: cannot take any reactions until the start of your next turn. And on a one to four, uh, you spend your turn doing nothing. Turn is over. Oh no. Oiled. All right. Uh, I'm thirty feet. Do I need to make a save? I should be good, right? Uh, if you are within thirty feet. No, so you're 40 feet away, you are good. Are these 10 foot squares do it, stupid? No, they are not. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and attack them. Uh, All right. 13. But that is a miss. Darn it. Uh, <laughs> that'll do it. Yes. I will avert my eyes. And then I'll use my bonus action to use my fighting spirit. And attack the... Number Hulk. Normal roll. You got Normal it. Normal roll. Hey, and another hit. Nice. And that's it. The Umber Hulk going to take its turn. Uh, I'm going to shuffle this way a little bit. And then... Let's uh, let's spread the love all around. So we are going to claw Wojtek. Ooh, that's it. The 22 for 11. All right, gotcha. And we're going to claw Durg with advantage, which I forgot to untoggle. So Durg, 25 is a hit Ooh. for <laughs> three. three damage. You, you take that. And then Nux, he's going to try and bite you with his mandibles. 19 is a hit is for... a hit? Foo! Foo! That's... 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 I'm down. Yeah, <laughs> that stings a little. <laughs> All right, and then Zisarod. You are still within its gaze. Yeah, but I'm still gonna try and look at it. Look at it. All right, another Christmas save. Doesn't matter. That is a pass. You are unaffected. Hmm. Trying to find an angle where I can shoot at it safely. You just have to get out of 30 feet. Yeah, but I still need an angle to shoot at it from. No. Ah, never mind. I'm just gonna stabilize Nox. Attempt to, anyways. Medicine check. That's uh -huh. stable. For now. And then, rest of my movement scuttle away. Sovereign? I shall fire another bolt. Well, before you do that, go uh, ahead I'm not going to look at it. Go ahead and remove that net one. Oh, well, it's uh, pretty much the same result anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Pow! Did I hit it? No, not even close. <laughs> Mother can't see very well with all this exhaustion. And or the inability to look at the thing they're shooting at. Uh, Wojtek. I'll stare at it. So I get sneak. Uh, what was it? Charisma save, was it? Yep. This is that. Oh, oh. <laughs> that, is a, that is a fail. Roll a d8, please. One. You spend your turn doing nothing. Eh, better than hitting someone. All right. Derg. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. So, avert your gaze, reckless attack? Yep. You got it. 19 is a hit, or 9. That is it. Um, 
correct me if I'm wrong. There's the, the to, no, okay. Never mind. Uh, Derg, Flash. Okay, this time I'm not looking at it, but I'm just showing my beautiful holy symbol and using channel divinity. Okay. Mm. Radiance of the Dawn. Present your holy symbol. Magical darkness is dispelled. Each hostile creature within 30 feet must make a con save. Or take radiant damage equal to 2d10 plus your cleric level. Okay. So it's 15 plus 3? Yeah, so 18 if it fails and 9 if it saves. Okay. That is a 4. He definitely failed. The whole 18. He's in pretty, okay. pretty bad shape. Then I'll move back a little bit and if I'm able to see Pinox, I'll heal him. But uh, they are so close that I don't know if I could actually see him well, without seeing the here, Umber here's, Hulk. Here's the thing, okay? Uh, you Right now, you're correct. You are turning your gaze away. So if you would like to turn so that you can see Nux, you would see the Hulk. Uh, you would have to make the save, because the the gaze says if you change so that you can see it during your turn, you would make the save immediately. Um, depending on whether you pass or not, could determine if you successfully cast a spell. So it's up to you. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll lift my eyes to be able to see them. Charisma save? And a fail. So a d8, please. A uh, six, I believe. Uh, five or six creature takes no action, but uses all of its movement to move. You've already moved up to your full speed, so that's going to do nothing. You are done. Nice. Oiled. All right. Uh, we clearly need somebody to do something, so I'm going to try and give. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, it wouldn't apply. You're you're forty feet away. The gaze only applies to creatures within thirty feet. So, Flash, you would be able to cast your healing word. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, let me cast it quickly, and then Oil. Eric can continue. Here, uh, let us. Oh, it's a little little too late now, but. <laughs> Uh, I can put an aura out for the Umber Hulk so that we can see where the gaze is affecting. Although he's almost dead, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Uh, Oiled is doing what? Yeah, I'm going to fire over the uh, corpse of Nux at the Hulk. So. You got it. Six is a miss. God. Great rolls today. Uh, mm. That'll be it. Nux. Okay, I'll, I'm going to stand up, avert my eyes, and use a fighting spirit again to attack the, the Hulk. When, when you used it last time, did you remember to give yourself temp HP? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, six okay. is a miss. Okay. And that's my turn. All right, the Umber Hulk. Gonna go on a rampage. Let us law at Nux. Seventeen. Is a uh, hit. Smash. Oof. So you're still up, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then we're going to claw at Voitech. Twelve. That's a miss. Okay. And then we're going to Mandible Dirt. You ready? Uh -oh. <laughs> mm, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> seven. Yep, take seven. Oh, you're fine. He still got twenty health. Uh, no, I don't. What? Well, now, now you're at thirteen. Um. Oh, your token's not update. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't not update automatically. Okay, and then Zisrod. Uh, looking at it still.
<laughs> you know, for being oh. the smart one, <laughs> you're like, hmm, it's pretty. <laughs> uh, two, that is, you do nothing. You're just stunned. Okay. Mom? Uh, Mom is going to fire again. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to do ammo counts and it's not working very well. Uh, I'm going to not look at it. Oh. I hit it. Ah. Uh, Mom. Your arrow. I'm sorry. Your bolt flies through the air, striking the creature right between the eyes. And and I would imagine like you're you're turned like looking to the right and pointing to your left and you just blind fire dead shot between the eyes. The creature falls over dead. Sixteen no scope. <laughs> this is why I am the mother. <laughs> that is going to be the end of combat. See, this is why I have the title of mother. You did it, Bon. You saved us all. What the heck? I'm trying to adjust my crossbow bolt count, and it's not working. Now it's fixed. So what would you guys like to do? Can we use this for I, food? I'll look <laughs> in its tunnel if there was anything further down that might look useful. The tunnel seems to proceed for, uh, say, 20, 30 feet, and then comes into a larger opening. Uh, come on, then. Uh, which one of you is tough and wants to help mother why are we going inside the wouldn't there be more no I, i'm pretty sure they're solitary creatures i don't know my, my question is can we eat the, him can we Probably. eat it Probably. oh then then and uh you uh, the third you bags, you head as a helmet it. maybe you can do the confusing thing to enemies as well <laughs> maybe <laughs> we could try go to Gonna use my short sword to to chop his head off. Head off. Sure. Uh, Severin is gonna try and stealth into the cave. Okay, Severin is going into the cave. Nux is uh, dismembering the Umber Hulk to use yep. its its characters. <laughs> I'm helping to dismember the Umber Hulk. I want to see where this goes. Is anybody else accompanying Mother? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go while they cook or the thing. All right. So just, again, make sure that I am clear. Durg and Nux are staying here. Oil and Seaswat. And Sovereign. <laughs> you guys are breaking rule number one. <laughs> well, we don't think it's going to have another Umber Hulk. So Sovereign or That would be just Voitech, cruel. Uh, as you make your way through the tunnel and into uh, what you are finding to be the Umber Hulk's lair. You see that there are a number of other similar tunnels that lead upwards into uh, the ceiling, the walls. Uh, but I would like... Uh, Sovereign, why don't you go for it? This was your idea to investigate this. Roll me another d20. Uh-oh. All right, uh, you discover nothing. Ooh. All right, we're going to go eat that umber Hey, pork. hey, that Nothing's was... Nothing's better than something that dangerous. That was your role, okay? It could have been something really cool, but it wasn't. <laughs> Nothing is better than someone... No, see, this table, uh, after, after an ambush encounter, uh, there's only good things. Except for the nothing. And nothing is bad. All right, back to go eat the Umber Hulk. Okay, uh, so that was your first day, right? At the end of that day, you would be able to take another rest. Um, and during that long rest, you could salvage for more food. Well, I guess you could just eat the Umber Hulk, right? Yeah. Uh, even though the Umber Hulk is an insect-like creature, 
uh, it would be eaten very similar to, like, say, crab, crab. or lobster. You have to crack the carapace, and th and then you can uh, access the meat underneath. Um, <laughs> and the meat is very fatty and oily. It's a very dirty and sloppy uh, mess. And you leave shards of Umber Hulk carapace everywhere. Uh, but you're able to complete your long rest and uh, prepare for day number two. That was just day number one in our escape, baby. <laughs> that was... <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be fine. <laughs> gonna be fine. <laughs> we eat the umbrock and gain its power. I'm using I'm using the the, the head of the umbrock as a helmet. <laughs> you can certainly do First. that. I would imagine like its mandibles, since how they're so long, they would hang from your tiny head to like your yeah. belly button. Like it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a very intimidating look. <laughs> All right, here we go. Two more d20s for day number two. If we leave behind the dead, the carcass, we can leave it as a warning for the people chasing us. <laughs> yeah, with its head chopped off and it's dismembered. <laughs> it's all cooked and eaten. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point, Snow. Like, as you walk, the oversized helm would, like, bob, and they, they just kind of, like... <laughs> bounce off your stomach <laughs> <laughs> all right serious uh two d20s here we go 17 uh so if we did we rest nobody listens yeah with food and drink and we can get rid of uh, an exhaustion then that is correct yay i'm slightly less roll on okay cool 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 Mother uh, has full HP once more. Let's roll another d20. Okay. As you travel. Ah. Huh. Mike died. No, I wasn't saying anything. Oh, okay. I just oh, you start saying as you travel, and then it just went silent. That's because that's because I I finished reading the blurb. Uh, as you travel, you come upon um, three drows walking through the chamber, and uh, at first, when you see them, you're very alarmed. Are are these the pursuers? And they seem to be walking in, uh, towards you, in your direction. Can we, can we hide somewhere? Certainly. The Underdark is very, uh, as we said, it's a cavern. Um, there would be rocks and all types of other things, uh, large fungal you know, mounds and, and things that we could use for cover. Uh, if you'd like to try and hide, go ahead Scatter. and make a stealth check. Okay, so everybody just disperses, hiding behind uh, whatever they can find. And these drow keep walking steadily in your direction. Let's, uh, there's no need to put tokens on the map. We'll just use our imagination. Uh, Hide harder. They're not in the um, prison uniform, are they? That's a good question. Roll perception check. Can we all do that? Oh, actually, that reminds me. Ha! Remember, I told you there's very many moving pieces. Another thing uh, that that we get to roll randomly for at all times is the lighting situation in any given area. I forgot about it, so we're just going to assume this, this area is lit by mushroom. Uh, but there is a separate roll for the light. Uh, and the lighting situation is either one of three things. And I'm sorry for kind of going off on a different tangent in the middle of an encounter, but it's important, right? The lighting situation in every encounter is, is one of the following. It's either 
pitch black, which wouldn't hinder the party too much because you all have dark vision, right? The only the only reason that would matter is for being able to perceive objects, encounters, and threats, right? Because even though you have dark vision, if it's dim lighting for you, it's still disadvantage on perception. Okay. Uh, then there is, then there is illuminated, and it's either illuminated by uh, the phosphorescent mushrooms, like this cave, or there is a special, uh, there is a special. We'll call it a material inside the underdark and all of you would have been informed of this by mother our local our underdark native and guide and this material is called bear's wrist right and what what bear's wrist is is it is a magical energy that pervades certain areas of the underdark it's just seen as, as a part of the ecosystem where there's this magic, it, it's in the rocks, in the air, and wherever Fairsris is, uh, it, there is light. Okay? Uh, however, people in the Underdark know that the Fairsris is dangerous, uh, and you shouldn't linger in areas of Fairsris for too long. So, that is that. Uh, we're gonna say that this area where you encounter these drow is uh, area filled with fairsris. Hey, Norris, thank you for the resub. The wibbly wobbly months. magic wagic. Yeah, that's <laughs> very technical turn. Yes. All right. So illumined by the fairsris, you get you see these drow, and uh, we'll say that you guys, when you scattered, half of the group is on like one side of the, of the tunnel. Half is on the other. And they're going to be walking right between all of you. Uh, Voitech, since you're trying to get a good look at them, make a perception check. It'll just be a normal roll since we're illuminated here. Um, so 20 is good. Uh, I see Durg has an 18. Looking at these guards, no. Uh, they, are, they are not wearing the uniform of the Valkenville prison. So what are they wearing? Uh, just normal, what would be seen as drow attire. Nothing... Wearing some house colors, but not one that we know. Sure, let's go with that. Uh, the answer is more akin to, it's not significantly important. <laughs> <laughs> are they carrying large amounts of crossbow bolts? Ooh. Uh, don't you have, like, six quivers of crossbow bolts? I have two. Yeah, but I thought Zisrod and... Maybe not Zisrod, but somebody picked up a couple... Because you guys raided the armory. And I thought other people were carrying uh, bolt cases for you. Yeah, I think yeah. I have I have five on me. <laughs> I'm just carrying No, it. we have 36 days of travel before we reach any significant place, so uh, that's a lot of crossbow bolts I'm going to need. Need, it'll just scavenge whatever you can get. Mom, should we approach the drow or should we just hide here and let them pass? Uh, do they have anything that looks good on them? Hmm. Do you, do you want us to murder them? Let, well, let me answer your question with a question. What looks good? Are they carrying packs? Yes. You do see each Ooh. of the three drow carrying a backpack. Do they have weapons? Almost certainly. <laughs> uh, so, like, back at the prison, there were, like, standard drow, and then there were, like, drow captains. Do these look like standard drow or, like, captain drow, or any mix of them? Can you tell me what the difference is between a captain drow and a regular drow? Captain Zhao would be dressed uh, slightly fancier and have slightly better weapons. <laughs> no, they all wear the similar attire. <laughs> Whether that means it's all fancy or it's all not, I guess that's up to you to determine. So these, they look more like townspeople and not guards. 
Are they wearing like armor? Or no, I think it was said I didn't hear. They are they are armored. They wear leather armor. Mom, what are we doing? We're gonna kill him. Mom well, said we we're gonna kill him. Not kill him, but you know, just, just knock him out, I guess. If you want to knock him out, that's also fine. Uh, I, I cannot accident. I cannot non-lethal with a crossbow, however. So what happens? <laughs> happens. You fire, fire the bolt backwards, <laughs> pointy end towards you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Severin will start trying to make like hand gestures over the one rock he's hiding behind to the other group. <laughs> okay. So, what is the plan then? So we're gonna ambush them. Is that what we are gonna do? That's my plan. Uh, so. Severn will kind of gesture to the other two on their on their side of the cave to like stays down for a little bit and then Severn will pop out from behind the rock and start approaching. They don't react to your approach. They just continue walking. Hmm. Uh Severn will Severn will call out to them <laughs> in uh, under common. They turn and they look at you. But when they do, you can see that their eyes are they're a milk white, completely glazed over. And even though you get the impression that they see you, there's no recognition in their face, no reaction to your presence. Kill them! No magic! How? What? No magic? Kill him? Doesn't what? dispute? What? 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 Uh, Severn, <laughs> your crossbow. I mean, I'll, I'll bash him on the head with a short sword, I guess. Do we, do we roll or...? Sure, make an attack. How do I surprise a creature? You, well, you would need to be hidden in... Uh, that's more for combat. Because, oh, I see. you know, if, you're, if they're surprised, then they don't get an action. Oh, uh, 9, That's 10, 11, 12, 13. Wojtek kills one outright with his, with his first attack. Sovereign. Oh, I, was trying to, I was trying to butt it on the head to knock it out. Yeah, you can't say that after the fact. Oh, well, <laughs> what the hell? My bad. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. So you Whoops. kill the first. Uh, Sovereign, he shoots the other. And you see it takes the bolt and falls to the ground. It tries to force itself back up very weakly. The third turns and looks at the fallen uh, drow and just stands there. They are already dead. Slay them. Are you talking to me? Yes, children. Get them. Steal oh. their path. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna walk up to them. Yeah. On his lash, did, did, did you draw? Take that. <laughs> <laughs> it is mercy killing. I love, the, I love the crit for zero damage. Because <laughs> you have a negative strength score. <laughs> I hit him with my spell All right, Durg. Fun fact, Severin can heal with punches. Durg, uh, you attack. The, the one that had taken the crossbow bolt, and it dies. The third still stands looking at you. I'm Next sorry. <laughs> it is a mercy killing. Do it. They, their brains are long gone. Only the body moves. Flash moves up the last one. There we go. Okay, the third one uh, gets knocked to the ground, and then with the entire party working in tandem, they are dead. I'd grab their packs. I did my part. What 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 happened here? Uh, I'm confused. <laughs> you just murdered three people. <laughs> uh, clearly, uh, some fool decided to camp in the phase rays without realizing, and now their brains are gone. It camp on what? I told you earlier the wibbly wobbly magic wagic. Ah. Uh, 
So magic stuff happened, and these guys were already dead. Is that in, it? In the deep dark, mm. there is the weirdo magic. Uh, it's it's weird. Weird. Okay. Uh, if you stay too long near it, you go funny. Oh, that, that is an interesting theory. So Dork already went there. Perhaps. Was he funny? <laughs> Wait, what? What? <laughs> or he You're has funny. Brain to melt. <laughs> What? So, so, Dirk is immune to the effects because he has no brain. Yeah. <laughs> it is irrelevant. Grab their packs. Okay, I'm grabbing their packs. All right. Uh, you see that one of the packs has a large gash at the bottom. Its contents have long been spilled out. The other two are still complete. And they are, retrospectively, a uh, Dungeoneer's pack and an Explorer's pack. Are there rations Ooh, in this? Yes. Rations. Yes, the rations that would be included in those packs are included. Yes! <laughs> what kind of uh, weapons do they have on them? I'm gonna take the whole Explorer's pack and put it on my pack. They would each have short swords. Oh. We didn't eat an Umber Hulk 10 minutes ago. No, we, we ate an Umber Hulk yesterday. like yes, 12 yesterday. hours ago. <laughs> And also, even if it was 10 minutes ago, I'm always hungry. That's Me too. why Dirk's mouth is like half of his token. <laughs> <laughs> so, Seaswat uh, is gonna take a whole explorer's pack, and the rations he's gonna take out and put into the other backpack. This and is good. you're gonna divide that. I... Yeah. Now we have, uh, let's see, I think there's 20 days of rations in there. So that's almost three days worth of food for all three of us. <laughs> yeah, it's that like is... m more like two or, or one day because I I, I I I'm running hungry, you know. Yeah, me too. We're all really hungry. As you guys, anyway. uh, as you guys start pulling out the contents of the packs, you see that there is a. Almost like a, a silt that covers uh, the exterior of the bags. It's like a powdery so, substance. Severin would like to examine it? Sure. It, this would be a nature check. Ooh. You recognize that this, this very small powder is uh it's like spores that's what you recognize it to be microscopic spores that have coated uh this person's belongings uh oh now you might want to check those rations uh were i <laughs> Uh, not accompanied by several goblins. I'd probably try and slice one of these guys open to see if they're mushroom men. <laughs> Why can't you do that? Uh, is anyone opposed to me checking if they're mushroom men? Uh, you could no. also just examine the bodies. Do they appear to be mushroom men? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> 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 uh, investigation, medicine, or uh, any of those would be acceptable. Uh, one of you who is maybe better at medicine or investigation should check <laughs> if they're mushroom men. 16, thank yeah. you, Zisrod. So you, you stoop down and you start to exor examine the body. <coughs> Excuse me. As you do, you can ascertain two things. One, these are not mushroom men. They are drow made of flesh and blood. But two, as you look at them, you see something most unusual. There is a wound out of the back of these drow's skull. And when you move their hair to get a better look at this wound, you can see that there are actually several of them. It's a um, 
spot, almost like a series of spots on the back of their head. And through these spots, you can see tendrils growing up out of their skull. And these tendrils, they just end in these um, fleshy fungus like proboscis. Um, they're just these tubers that have taken root inside. And you can see that this is probably uh, how they died. We may have to ditch the packs. Why? Why? Don't... They're covered in mushrooms, and these men have died from mushrooms. But we just ate mushrooms. We... There are many kinds of mushrooms. Some murderous, and some uh, prey. But that's food. Didn't we eat that that umber hulk? That they're going to become mushroom man. No, mom. Uh, I'm gonna throw I'm you. Think. I'm gonna throw you a bone. All right. You examine the supplies. You see that being inside the pack, they were protected from these spores. So the container, the pack itself, you would not, you would need to discard. But you could salvage all the supplies within. The problem is, every time we've tried to do that, you've been, you have no backpack. Zisrod has a backpack. He took one from the armory. Wait, were there backpacks in the armory? I thought there were no backpacks in the armory. I thought that was distinctly why we couldn't steal more stuff. What do you mean? Yes, I do have a backpack. I just took one from the corpses. No. Rip. <laughs> No goodies for us. Can't we carry Don't you them have, on wait, our hand? You guys didn't make uh Hold on, hold on. I know you guys said you, you made uh what are they called? The hobo packs. A what? Yes. Oh some something with the the ladder we we gathered, so we made something like some satchels or something like that. Yeah. Just throw them in a bundle, carry them with you. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Yay. Uh, no, the hostage was died. <laughs> Why did we kill these people? Look at them, they're already dead. They got mushroom brain. Don't you do they, it? They just, the body didn't know they were dead. No kidding. We should go. Yes. Best not to ask too many questions, Derek. Yeah, my head's already hurting. Why shouldn't I ask questions? Because questions tend to lead to uncomfortable answers. Because <laughs> now we have to ask, what mushroom did this? It was a mushroom? Exactly. This is why we don't ask questions, because then we have more questions. <laughs> He's been infected. All right, you guys ready? Um, yes. So that would be our second day of travel. So another rest. Um, I would assume you guys are going to eat the rations, mm -hmm. or or would you like to forage? I love you, Daddy Warbucks. Foraging might be a better idea. Rations hey, hey, Snow, thank you for the yeah, gift subs. Yeah, can shoot again. Uh, Gomo, Felda, uh, just step away Eric, for a second. Maverick, Did I miss and I Phoenix, you, welcome Warbucks. to the family. Is that a real little attempt to forage, I guess? Just in case. If not, uh... Yay! I love you, Daddy Warbucks. Uh, I find twice as much food, so Saverin finds uh, 32 pounds of food. I'm gonna eat 16 pounds of food. <laughs> eat 16 pounds. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I'm thinking there's probably... Here, cat? There's probably... I know Go Outlander ahead. has something about it. Oh, hold up. No, 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 no. I'm talking about uh, the rules for how much food is actually required because there's a reason they list it in 
pounds instead of just saying you can forage food for a day, right? So a character needs one pound of food per day. So if you find how, how much was it? 16 pounds? 16. That you can feed the party for uh, two days. As long as the food keeps. So we can eat the forage, forage yes. food? Well, that's and good. Then... That means we won't have to roll for foraging food every single day. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Alright, there we go. That's good. We should essentially be able to, to fend off starvation. Uh, let's do another set of encounters. Or 1D... One A. Why did I only do one D ten? I need two of them. So nineteen and eleven. Uh, I know the eleven is nothing, but nineteen is a something. Oh, that's a two somethings. That's a terrain and a, a creature. So let us sort those out. Before we sort those out, I need rolls for D six roll. For, to see if this is a single file, uh, and if they, if your pursuers are getting closer, just eeny meeny miny oiled roll d6. Voitech already did. Oh, I think oh, that was it. better. Did he? Yes. Yeah, Voitech beat me to it. Oh, okay. But he wasn't told the rule. Uh, <laughs> So, five or six, the encounter is in a large open area. So, hooray! Uh, illumination, D6. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll do Voitex for that. That is a three. Uh, it's dimly lit by phosphor phosphorescent moss. Good, great. Glad we got that taken care of. So, then we need... I'm just gonna... Here, this, we're just gonna have all these roles delegated to players. <laughs> that way you guys can feel like you're doing something. Uh, junior roll d20 ozzy roll d20 <laughs> junior roll the five. Ooh. oh god junior why oh no he had to be junior <sighs> flash rolled an eight okay so junior first as you guys are traversing you come upon a large open cavern and immediately you can detect something is wrong uh, does anybody have a passive score of 14 or higher? Good question. Passive perception, 14 or higher? Uh, uh, typically, yes, but currently, no. Right, because you're still exhausted. So, no. Awesome. <coughs> All right. Uh, as you guys travel through this large open cavern, um, you feel yourself feeling kind of dizzy. Your head swims. Something is very, very wrong. Uh, everybody make a con save, please. DC is 12. Uh oh. <laughs> I start like an exhaustion again. I don't like making saves. Oh, gee. All right. DC 12. Zisrod failed. Derg and Sovereign failed. So you are each going to... I'm just going to give you the average. You're each going to take five poison damage. And... Now that uh, people feeling physically ill and suffering the effects uh, now you will all may attempt to make a active uh, perception so before it was first passive now we are actively looking we know something is wrong right. help we need a 14 <laughs> you guys are always <laughs> <laughs> blinded me uh, give me a minute. I will see. Oiled! There we go. We yeah, got a pet. Oiled. You 
recognize what is wrong. There's an odor in the air. It's very acrid and bitter. And you realize this entire cavern is filled with poisonous gas. Mm, it's nasty in here. We, uh, it's, we should probably go. Uh, I smell that gas. My head feels dizzy. Mother can hold her breath for one round. Okay. Hold up. Wait. <laughs> one round isn't going to matter. Um, you guys are able to exit the cavern, running away from the gas without issue. Um, as you, however, the important thing here is because the gas has disoriented the party, you guys travel at a slower speed which means your pursuers are catching up. So we are effectively the same distance we were three days ago before the, the lava fissure. Okay? Okay. They're getting closer. Oh, no. We need right. a diagram with, like, cutouts of us and then cutouts of the enemy, and we can move them across the line. We can arrange How do they... I don't know. By all means, it doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense? Oh, nothing. It's a joke from uh, the Emperor's New Groove or whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, the for, for the encounter that you rolled, you guys encounter more Spore Servants! Yay! Um, these ones, however, uh, you see, again, feel your sight. As you exit the Poisonous Caverns, you see th uh, a number of creatures moving towards you. They walk in the same slow, steady gait as the drow that you had seen yesterday. Except these are no drow. These creatures are much larger. Um, they stand at about eight feet tall, and they almost look like large vultures with a musculature akin to that of a bear. Except where their hands are, uh, they don't have digits or, or um uh, at the end of their extremities no their their extremities end in giant hooks uh they're car car curled and wicked and sharp and uh you see that they probably don't want to tango with them at all We should try to... Mom, what are we doing? Are they carrying packs? <laughs> no, the hook horrors are not carrying packs. Uh, let's go around. Yeah, this is a wide open cavern, oh, right? Yeah, wide open cavern, correct. Should just, yeah, stealth and let them pass, I guess. There, there is absolutely no reason to fight these things. They have no goodies. Maybe, maybe they are the goodies. Well, if we <laughs> leave them, if we do, then our people following us will I have just to. Like to comment, right. I am very disappointed in Roll Twenty not having linked handouts in their in their journal entries. They've done it in every other book, and there are there are no handouts for any of the creatures, and I'm very disappointed. I'm a very angry letter. No, I don't have to write a letter. I'll I'll just uh, I'll just go to my connects. Like, hey, guys, this sucked. Don't do this. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Um. So I believe the consensus was we are not gonna mess around with the hooked horrors. Yes. That's yeah, no. probably a very good, very good plan. Uh, I, I, kn I know you guys, the players, have fought Hooked Horrors before, but those are, uh, those are not things you throw at level 3 creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, that's it for this day. This is uh, another opportunity to rest. 
you can continue nomming on the rations and remove another another day of exhaustion. Easy peasy. Eighteen and seventeen. Ooh. Ooh, that's bad. Oh no. Yeah, that's three encounters. Uh, terrain creature creature. I am the only one with the bed roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we need three d20 rolls. Uh, Ozzy, Mylord, and Falk. D20, okay. Yeah. So we have seven, 16, and 10. The rain creature, creature. There we go. Mother is almost back to their old self. Uh, as we enter into another encounter, I need two d6 rolls. Mom and uh, Gura. This is for the light and the the uh, you know the winding tunnels. Okay. Uh, so mom is for the marching order. Roll of three to four. The standard passageway. So we are two by two. Uh, illumination was a four. Area is complete darkness. And no, as, if only. as you guys are walking, um, you find yourselves uh, on a passageway, which we know is 10 foot. Uh, this, on this passageway, you can see that it, it overlooks a large ravine the bottom of which cannot be seen. Uh, if you were to fall, it would surely be lethal. So the party is forced to travel at a slow pace for the next day. Which means your pursuers are getting closer. Oh no. Oh yes. Uh, I, I, if only I, think... I had a bag of Kultrops. <laughs> that would slow them down. All right, and then for our encounters, we had 16 and 10. Do 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 do. Yes. Oh, actually, you get this twice. Cool. All right. Ooh. Interesting. Ooh. So you guys are, are walking through. And uh, as you traverse this ledge, and I'm going to say you make it off of, off of the ledge after uh, traveling at a slow pace for so long. Um. You, f <laughs> you find yourself coming face to face with two creatures. They are uh, about five to six feet tall, and they seem to be made of a orange and, and white sponge-like material. Again, I don't have handouts. Thanks, Roll20. Hello. So, give me a second. Luckily, I know how to finesse the chat box. They look like this. Ooh. Yes. So they. Those are mushrooms. They are mushroom men. So you walk out in front of them, and uh, they they look at each other before turning their attention to you, and then almost instinctively you see them raise their fists, positioning them in front of their face. Now we can leave mushroom men alone. We don't have to fight mushroom men. 
I mean, the last one we met was kind of friendly, so. Is he? Shh, don't mention us? it. They might get mad if they find out. I would like put my fist in my face back at him. No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Punching yourself in the face is universal greeting. Little do you know, that is the deepest sign of insult you can make in the Myconic. <laughs> <laughs> they, they look at each other. And then uh, you see it raises its hands. It opens its hand so both of its palms are facing you. Fingers up towards the sky. He gestures, pushing his hands towards you a little bit, before closing them, and then bringing his fist to rest on his chest. Uh, repeat the motions. I'm going to back off. An interpretive dance. Oh, we he just, just hungry. We all just started dancing in sync. <laughs> With a flash problem. <laughs> it, it, it stares at you. Its expression so difficult to read as they don't have facial features like humanoids do. Instead, it holds one hand flat, palm up. It takes the other hand and makes a fist. It points to you and then to itself before taking that fist and Landing it in his open hand. Come it's at just... me, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think <laughs> it's very clear that if we stay here, they are going to fight us. Oh, I thought it was asking if we were going to fight it. They want to stomp us into the ground. Like a Wait. friendly wrestling match? <laughs> Wait a minute, I just... Why are we going to the Mykonid cave? None of us speak Mykonid. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we never thought about that. Three, three days into the journey to to the Mykonid village, and you're like, wait a minute! <laughs> like a really bad TV show. Uh, you can sort uh, that, that out later. <laughs> what's a sign of peace? Punching yourself in the face. We have that already. I, I don't oh, know. Wait. What would... I have that that mushroom thing I found, right? The poison one. What if we show it? No, don't. Oh, no, <laughs> no. Is that like hey, it's it's kind it's of mushrooms too, it's or is it like <laughs> here? Eat this. The mic and it's stare at you, confused. They they point beyond you. Oh wait, are they right behind us? Is there something behind us? <laughs> I turn around. It's just the the hallway, the cavern passage to which you just exited. Let's just leave. This is clearly going nowhere. Yeah, but we can't just go back the way we came. Wait, wait. I can try something. Uh-oh. What, are you going to try and charm the mushroom? No, no. My background gives me something. Oh, no, it doesn't. Mushroom <laughs> no, those are not humanoids, aren't they? No, myconids are not humanoids. Oh. They, they look at each other, and then back to your group. You, you see them, they raise their hands again, and then they start stepping towards you. We should back up. Raise our hand and start backing up. Let's as, see what happens. As as you start backing away from them, they stop. I think they want us to leave. They point again beyond you. Hmm. And okay, they, yeah. And then they, they start to walk to towards you. They're probably hiding something good here. <laughs> <laughs> Are they carrying bags? <laughs> I don't want to find out who our that is like, mushrooms seem scary. They are big. 
living really big. We you should we should should leave. Yes, I am with him. We had a Mark, that can understand the dance. So you guys are gonna turn around and leave? Uh, back yes. the way, like I mean we could find a different path. Are we sure? Can't we just I think tomorrow we should the dark to get here? I didn't hear what you said, Eric. Uh, never mind. I'm I'm just muttering to myself. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> Mom, what are we doing? The the mic in its point again beyond you and starts to step f f towards you. Uh, we we shall let the gods decide. Odd we fight, even we leave. Okay, let's get out of them. <laughs> So we're fighting the Mykonids now? I want to fight the Mykonids! You do you or don't back. want to fight the Mykonids? I do want to fight the Mykonids. Alright, let's go kill the Mykonids. Look, I this hope. is the end of the dark. Nobody likes Mykonids. It's mob's decision. Also, I'm, just, I'm just worried that, okay, we fight Mykonids now, but we're going to a Mykonid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... You know, this is a fair point. <laughs> Let's leave. We can fast. We can run fast tomorrow, and then the day after that, we'll go slow again, and we can forage, and then we can go back to fast. So you're Maybe they'll to... be in a better mood tomorrow. So you're going to double back. Yes. Double back. Yeah. Okay. So you guys turn around and start to walk away. The Mykonids follow you. Huh. Follow us. <laughs> All right. Happening. Whenever yeah, you, I'm we have made, mother has found two new children. When, whenever, whenever you turn around to check, they are still behind you, trailing about fifteen feet. And whenever you look at them, they just point down the passageway. Guys. They are leading us to never like Grove. Guys, uh, maybe they just want to pass. Maybe we should just. Let them then go past us. Yeah, but we we like. All right, we'll step to either side and create an opening for them yeah, to walk past if they want. Okay, so so they stop. They put their hands up again, and they cautiously begin to move through your group. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they move. Okay. Oh, so they pass. Yes, you. If you let them, they will walk past you. Them, they they walk past us. <laughs> oh, then let's continue right, then we going. Back. Back. <laughs> <laughs> now we follow him. Now them. we go the way we originally were going. <laughs> we start following them fifteen feet. <laughs> <laughs> they creep them out. Just hurry up and get out of here. And make confusing hand gestures. <laughs> Okay, so 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 we go go our, our way. Yes, huh? and then Glad we didn't kill them. <laughs> uh, you continue traveling, uh, moving beyond the Mykonids, and as you continue, so still other, uh, you run into. You guys run into a pack of. Did I roll it? Yes, I did. Five. Five tiny fish like creatures. They uh, carry a uh, several bundles of equipment. And if you approach, you can see that this bundle has been laid out onto uh, a blanket. And on this bundle, you can see a number of uh, salted fish-like creatures uh, and a number of goods and products. This seems like a trap. You throw something at it, like a rock. I'm going to throw a rock at it. 
Wojtek, Carl Durg. Oh, never mind. Whoa. I was going to say, I was going to look at it closer, see if anything's suspicious. Suspicious? Uh, what exactly fine. would be a hint of suspicion? Oh, whatever that thing is, that's suspicious. Whatever that thing is, it's got a door flying towards him now. What? Oh, okay, so you guys throw a rock at the uh, Uatoa. No, the provisions. <laughs> they they stand up and they start uh, they start running around their little blanket. <laughs> And the, oh they're... god, not more of these. <laughs> Kill they, them! As, uh, as they, they start to kind of panic, uh, one of them talks in Undercommon. Who speaks Undercommon? Sisrod. And Sisrod. Had a flash. What? Why would you do this? What? <laughs> 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 Is this stream gonna be copyright strike? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, mouse! <laughs> All right, hold up. Why are you Kuotoa on a blanket in the middle of the underdark? We trade stuff along the passages. Oh, trade, you say? Yeah. Or at least we did until people threw rocks at us. Uh, my friend's an idiot. Uh, anyways, uh, do you by chance know where I could acquire a longbow and uh, arrows? We have no money. Shh. We have a great number of crossbow bolts. Uh, I don't believe they would have it. Their provisions are only equal to 120 gold pieces worth of materials. So they have a lot of junk. Okay. But they also have 10 days worth of provisions in salted and sickly looking fish. Wait, hold up a minute. This <laughs> kind of like <laughs> looks very worried at these Kuatoa. Uh, your fish and your eating fish? He, he blinks at you. Why, yeah! <laughs> you do know that fish eat other fish, right? It's like what they eat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like you said they're like sickly fish. So I don't know if he's eating like weak kuatoa. No, these are like actual fish, like little okay. swimming dudes. Blub blub. Uh, anyways, uh, so they have nothing useful in uh, supplies. I didn't just say that. Much, I, think. I said they have 10 uh, what, days what worth What do of you have in provisions uh, and supplies? You want me to pick? <laughs> okay. Uh, does anyone have any requests before uh, they declare it? Big weapon. A big... Do you by chance have a great club? And or a mall? That's not adventuring gear. Ah. Oh. If you would listen. They can. They have up to 120 gold pieces value of adventuring gear. So what? What do they have here? Since it's you have a portable ram. Negative. <laughs> we have. Uh, there is a a uh, quiver full of arrows, a vial of antitoxin, uh, a lamp. There is a tattered looking backpack. A bedroll. Oh, backpack. Uh, we need backpacks and bedrolls, I think. No, we don't need bedrolls, but... We don't need one. So, they gather the backpack and the bedrolls, and then uh, they hold out their hoin, their hoin? Their hand, expecting your coin. Uh, do you also do you accept barter? Why yeah? <laughs> All right, what do we have to trade them? Lots of daggers and crossbow bolts. 
let's see, a backpack is... Two gold. Two gold. I, I have a bag of Kate call traps and a bag of spikes, iron spikes. Iron spikes. Pittance. Yes. No, iron spikes. Ten, one gold piece. So that'd be five silver. And good. Not, not good enough. We should just go try and murder someone else and steal their money. Thanks. Uh, I can't, I can't, uh, exchange the bag of cow traps, the spikes, and a hammer I have. To, to, for the the backpack, right? Yep, because that would be uh, two gold. Two, two gold, yeah. You got it. So I'm gonna remove this. Mother just looks back at their arguing goblins. Quit it, all of you. Sorry, Mom. Is there anything else? It's because you're dumb in a rock. It's because uh, you're probably the most sturdy and also the most dangerous when hurled. Okay, now I have a backpack. <laughs> and will that be Yes, I think. I don't think we have enough goodies to, like, properly barter. <laughs> no, where are we not? How many fish are there? Just one? I mean, the Kuatoa. I thought, uh, I rolled it earlier. It was five. There are five, five Kuatoa. We could, in all honesty, um, just murder them and take their stuff, but, like... <laughs> they were scared of a rock. I'm pretty sure if we hit one of them, they would run. You're but very we... murder hobo today, Gomo. I do whatever mom says. I am not a murder hobo. I have not murdered anybody. I killed uh, three drow who were unresponsive to common. But your answer to the non-hostile drow, the non-hostile myconids, and now the Kuatoa is we should just murder them. Oh, <laughs> uh, I am going to be very clear. That was the dice. <laughs> Dead. Odd we attack, even we leave. I'm asking myself whether I should try to steal some coin from those. Do it. Do it. it would be a good try. place to test out sleight of hand, right? Yeah. Ooh, mm. sleight of hand. Yes. What are you going to try and, and take? What's the most interesting thing? Is there I mean, a coin pouch? Yes. Probably. <laughs> Yeah, take the coin patch and then barter with it. Just <laughs> <laughs> go to make change, huh? <laughs> I mean, sure. Let's let's go for it. Why not? Um, um, can I help him? No, you can't. Like, help can him I? Sleight of hand. Okay. I thought if I like talk to the one guy. Ah, uh, no, that's fair. I guess you could provide. Oh, a no, you don't. <laughs> go ahead, make Ooh. slight. Ooh. All right. Well, hold <laughs> We're on. rich now. Hold on. Because they, they have a uh, plus four bonus to perception. Ooh. And their score could be... No, he can't pass. He literally can't. <laughs> uh, okay. So so as you start chatting him up, uh, Wojtek comes slinking in. Pilfers the coin purse. The big guy that I am. Well, you use your uh, super long uh, bugbear arms to... to take it off of his belt from a distance. I like how bugbears just have stupidly long arms for no reason. Cartoon stretchy hand. No, it's not for no reason. It's because of their physiology. Like, yeah, but like aren't Fulbergs bigger than bugbears? That's besides the They point. also have Alright, anyway. So you got the coin pouch. Now what? You want to be really confident, like, count it out in front of him. Sadly, they don't have a longbow, so that's a no-go. You should just leave with the money and use it at somewhere else. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, no reason to tempt fate, right? Yeah. 
Can we bribe I'm, them I'll to like you, what slow down the people gonna do to us if they? But yeah, let's go. I was wondering if we could like bribe them to like distract the guys following us. That that's don't show them. them. They were scared of a rock. They're gonna it's stop an entire search party of drow. <laughs> That, that's tell, tell them we went another way or something. I don't know. I mean, one. We could, we could try. We could try. I feel like shot, those yeah. drought cannot buy us. I'll toss him a gold. I guess it's like, hey, if somebody, if somebody asks, gold. I feel like we went that way. You're gonna toss gold. He's gonna look at his pouch and uh, to to put the gold inside his bag, and he's gonna miss <laughs> the the <laughs> right. His, his he bag. just falls straight to the floor. And kind of go. Hmm. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, let's just leave. <laughs> okay, dokie. Okay. Let's go. Uh, so you guys are going to leave? Yes. Yeah. Start walking away. I love you, Daddy Warbucks. Hey, Getting guys. closer to the three-year mark. Awesome ride. Enjoyed all of it, Daddy Matt Twenty. Ooh, thank you for the uh, Risa baby. Uh, thirty-two months. I still think uh, you're probably one of our longest subs. Appreciate you for the constant support. Can't wait to our next. Game, man. Been a lot of fun. All right. So we leave the Kuatoa traders. Start walking. And then, uh, what was our highest passive again? I know we just checked it not long ago. 13, I think. 13. Okay. So 13 is going to. good enough as our drow is not very stealthy as you guys are walking away from the traders you hear a stone fall and clatter onto the ground turn and look you see there is a drow perched up, up maybe about 15 feet above you on the cavern walls and right away you recognize the attire it's a velcan velve guard Shoot it. Hey, Mom. Mom, there's Drow's following us. Uh, 12 is a miss. He Quick, jumps get down him. from Don't the ledge and starts to run. Come on, I rush him. Uh, 20 is a hit. He stumbles and trips. Uh, <laughs> we just... Wojtek pulls out his hand crossbow and fires. And the Drow uh, lands face down on, in the dirt and stone. Go grab him. Get his gear. Yeah, grab his gear. Yeah, we'll drag him back. <laughs> Is there any convenient place to, like, ditch the body? I mean, you're in a cave network? Remember, there was, a, there was the cavern that you guys just traversed over? Yeah, chug him in the cavern. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait, wait, I would like to look at his, like, to see what he has on him first. Yeah, grab his stuff and chuck the body in the cavern. He has... Would you like his clothes? Ooh, close. No, yes. close to mother. Mother will blend in better. Nothing, because you won't let me talk. <laughs> he has a suit of studded leather armor and uh, a short sword, a hand crossbow, and a uh, a case of crossbow bolts. But he has one other object, which is unusual. It looks like a stone. Uh, but it's polished, almost silvery in color. <gasps> Hand it to mother. Wait. To do. I would like to cast detect magic on it. What? <laughs> what? Part of my barbarian feature, <laughs> I can. So you see, he kind of picks it up, and he looks at it, and is it magic? It is magical. Is it magic? It is magical, yes. What kind of magic? Uh, this would be... Uh, 
I don't know. This would be evocation magic. What color is that? What well, color is it? Red. So, so I start glowing red. Oh no, I'm just gonna explode. I feel like evocation <laughs> magic is slightly spicy. I, I, I just lick it. To give you uh, some more context, these silvery polished stones, on one side there is a face carved into it. Like a half profile. Hmm. Yep. That's what I figured. What are those? Bring it to Doug. But what? Fine. Then go give it to mom. Uh Sovereign will attempt to use the sending stone. <laughs> are, are you sure about that? <laughs> What is it? Are you suggesting we shouldn't? <laughs> chuck, chuck it in the ravine! Well, what, what is the message? <laughs> Send well, them a message. was going to uh, inform the other end, there is no sign of them, I am returning. It... Darren, is Darren, is that you? You sound different. Uh, there was a cloud of spores. It has damaged my uh, throat. Actually, actually, there's there's a flaw in your plan. The sending spell, when used, the creature hears the message in its mind and recognizes you as the sender if it knows who you are. So you use the stone, mm. and it goes, oh. The prisoner has the stone! Uh, no. <laughs> well, uh... Check in the ravine. Check in the ravine. <laughs> Puts it on floor. Dirk, smash it. I, I smash it. All right. The sending stone uh, bursts in a little pop and uh, is destroyed. And I kick it in the ravine. Well, time right. to move fast. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is going to, I think that's a good stopping point for today. Um, that was the end of our third day. Oh god, it's gonna take us fourth. literally five that sessions was, to reach was, Never Like our, Grove! That was our fourth day. So, uh, once again, um, at the end of the fourth day, let's, let's resolve this now. We've used up all of our foraged rations. So are we going to eat from our ration supply, or are we gonna forage some more? Does anyone have any objections to the rations, or do you want Severn to forage? Forage. Yeah, forage. Uh, we only should use the rations if we need to. Uh-oh. Fail. Okay, rations it is. Alright, so you, you, uh, there's enough food, you have one more, you have enough rations to feed the entire party for a day, and, uh, we will end the session on a long rest. And then we are one, two, three, five. This fifth day, yes, five days into our forever long journey to the Mykonid village. All right, and uh, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. I appreciate you being here. Hopefully, you enjoyed the session as much as I did. This was a lot of fun. Uh, if you enjoyed the stream, make sure you hit that follow button. If you haven't already, join us in the Discord. That's where we organize all of our games. That's where you need to be if you want to get involved and play some D&D &D yourself. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.